QBs, we'll start with them as always. First to start, who is your buy low QB this week? Yeah, I've gone for Ryan Tannehill uh, as my buy low. Last few weeks, he's had a really tough schedule and he's kind of dipped below his average a bit. But after Indy this week, he's got one of the best schedules out of all the quarterbacks and he's going to explode. So I'd be trying to get him because if you're in the playoffs in a super flex league, he'll be very valuable. Okay, can I ask before we move on, what is your tactic? So say you lose this week, you're out basically. Um, well, not guaranteed, but likely out if you lose this week. What's your trade tactics from there? Are you actually going to try and win the consolation final or are you going to give up and just... Uh, just my my tactic would just be get the best team possible. Just yeah, like, I'm just talking so playing that I have the best team. Yeah, you like it's always a bit. It would be pretty cool if you got the highest score in the last round, I reckon, and you beat the teams in the final, and then you can kind of lift them off a little bit. Yeah, but yeah, Tanner's tough set, tough one this week against the Colts, but yeah, moving forward, the Titans as a whole have an elite fantasy playoff schedule, so. Um, yep, yeah, definitely read that pick. My my one here, I'm not really the biggest fan of this guy, but I do think he might be going a little bit underrated this week. Wait, but... in, in fantasy or as a bloke? Um, you aren't a fan of him? In fantasy, I don't really know. Oh, okay. um, no, I'm not talking about Tanners. I'm talk- um, talking about my bloke, yeah, no, no. Matt Ryan. Um, your former man, Matt Ryan, who you traded away last week in one of the best trades of the season. <laughs> Um, he scored 5.28 in a bit of a horror game against the Saints. Um, the Saints defensive line tore the Falcons O line to shreds. Um, yeah. He doesn't have a nice schedule. I like can't really put that any other way. But um, and their O line's pretty bad at the moment. But the game script's likely going to suit the Falcons moving forward as they are in tough games. So they're going to probably tee off in the air, which is what they're best at. Um, but yeah, in my, terms of my rankings. Uh, I'm more looking at the short term because, you know, um, I want to get into fantasy playoffs first myself. But at the moment, I've still got him above Carson Wentz, Matthew Stafford, Cam Newton, and I've even got him above your man, Ryan Tannehill, in the short term. Um, And even if you have Taysom Hill, like a lot of people are frothing him at the moment, you could maybe try and trade for Matt Ryan if someone's, like, really needing short-term success because I think um, people will be quite like put off Matt Ryan by that 5.28, but I still think he's a pretty solid quarterback just outside that QB one range. So um, yeah, I think he would be going a little bit undervalued this week, but yeah, I don't know. The QB positions kind of fallen apart recently. Um, a lot of the, there was like 15 good ones to start. And then a lot of the guys just outside that QB one range have kind of collapsed recently in like your Wences, your Ryan, stuff like that. But yeah, I uh, back Ryan to be pretty solid moving forward. So if you're in a super flex or a QB two league, um, he will be a very handy second quarterback moving forward. Um, who's your sell high though? Yeah. My sell high is who just touched on Taysom Hill. Um, he put up, I think, 24 fantasy points. And a lot of people would, are jumping on the bandwagon with him. But the truth is he's not a, he's not a QB1 going forward. He's, if he doesn't, he's, he's kind of like Cam Newton, but probably a little bit worse going forward. That's how I'd look at it. He'll, he'll score a few rushing touchdowns, but if he doesn't, he's not going to offer much at all. So yeah. I'd be definitely looking to sell him off. Yeah, 100% agree with you. Just too much risk there for me. Um, they've got some solid fixtures, but yeah, I don't, I don't really want a bar of it. Um, I 100% agree with you. If I'm, Especially if I'm in the playoffs, I don't want Taysom Hill um, in my lineup. It's just too, too risky. Um, similar yep. to Cam, if he doesn't score a rushing touchdown, he's going to get like 10. So um, yeah, I 100% back you in there. Um my buy, uh, my sell high is I don't know if you still have him or not. I don't know if you've traded him away, but Kirk Cousins is my sell high. Um, he's been in pretty good form last three weeks. I think he's had a twenty-one, a seventeen, and this week he scored just under twenty-three against the Cowboys. Destroyed their secondary, um, made most of his weapons in Thielen and Jefferson. But Dalvin Cook's been pretty contained in the last three weeks, and by that I mean like. His yards per carry hasn't been ridiculous, even though he has had like 100 yards in all of them. But now they play the Panthers and the Jags in the next two weeks, two notoriously bad run defenses. So you'd imagine Dalvin Cook's going to get back on his horse and start torching them for five and a half yards per carry. 
And as a whole, the Vikings are probably going to run it more than they have the last couple of weeks where Cook has been um, not struggling but less dominant. So I think in general, the air game of the Vikings in the next couple of weeks is going to be a little bit limited due to Dalvin Cook's dominance. But um, yeah, for me, he's a sell high. It's not too relevant in QB1 leagues. Like He's probably not rostered in many, but if you've just got him sitting on your bench or something, um, I don't know, maybe try and get something for him. Uh, I reckon, like, I don't know how people, how highly people view recent performances, but if you could get someone like a Wentz or a Matty Ryan, or even if you look to free agency at blokes like Dan Jones and Phil Rivers, I reckon they're all upgrades on Kirk Cousins personally at the moment. So, um, yeah, he's a decent quarterback, does his job well, but I just think, yeah, with the whole Dalvin Cook situation, I'd probably be steering clear and. I, I didn't quite put him in, but I actually think Adam Thielen's also a bit of a sell high, but I don't know how you feel about that one. Do you, do you agree yeah, with that? Yeah, I, I agree with both those, yeah. Definitely Kirk Cousins. Um, yeah, he's not gonna be put he's not gonna be putting out twenty points very often. Yeah, I think I think in the playoffs they have um they play some good run defenses, so then they could become options there. Not necessarily cousins in the playoffs, but more Thielen and Jefferson. But yeah. yeah, for the next two weeks I'd be probably putting away your Vikings um uh like passing and receiving players. Um but moving into the running backs, uh who's your buy low here? Quite a lot of guys coming back from injury that I think are buy yeah. low. So I don't know if you're gonna touch on them, but who is your buy low? I haven't got a bloke coming back from injury. I've got Clyde Edwards Alaire. Um as soon as Lev Bell joined the Chiefs, a lot of kind of fantasy relevance has been taken away from Clyde and he had a few poor games, but last week and the week before he looked really good and he's clearly the he's clearly getting the majority of the reps in that Chiefs offense. So I think he's quite cheap at the moment and probably arguably in RB1 going forward, probably around the top 15 sort of range. Yeah, just with the amount of points the Chiefs score, yeah. if he's going to, like he did on the weekend, if he's going to start converting those red zone attempts into TDs, he's automatically a pretty good option, even if he's, the baseline stats aren't that crazy. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a good shout. Um, yeah, so these aren't my guys, but yeah, Eckler, Gaskin, Carson, Montgomery, and Swift are all probably worth a look at this week because I think they might be undervalued um, just because of their injury status or whatever. So keep an eye on them. Uh, but my buy low is actually one of my players. Um, I, ha- I rate this guy very highly, a lot more than others, but he didn't have a great weekend. But I've got JD McKissick as my buy low. Um, I've still, as I mentioned, I've still got him high, but he didn't get. He, I think he got like nine and a half or something against the Bengals on the weekend, which I can't lie was pretty disappointing. But in the last five matches, he's been averaging 5.4 receptions. So let's say he goes five receptions for 30 yards. All of a sudden, that's a baseline of like eight points. And he's, he doesn't have too many carries. He has like six to 10 a game. If he If he's rocking 30 or 40 yards from those bad boys, then all of a sudden it's one of the best flaws in fantasy um, out of like excluding the primo options. So I think he's a pretty safe option. I don't think he's going to come out and score huge too many weeks, but if you for, if you have a really bad running back situation like I do or I did, um, he's a pretty solid RB2 option, I reckon, and he's just going to provide you with like a lot of 10 to 15 scores and just be a reliable guy there, I reckon. So... Um, yeah, I think he's a pretty safe option. This week, they have the Cowboys, who last time out, if you remember. The Cowboys' defense has improved quite a lot since then, but last time out, the Washington um, football team just ran it down their throats. McKissick, Gas- uh, McKissick, Gibson, and Barber all killed them. So, yeah, I'm liking McKissick this week moving forward. Um, who's your sell high here? Yeah, McKissick's very underrated, actually, by myself included. Thanks, um, <laughs> My sell high is Jonathan Taylor. Um, had a great game against Green Bay, but Green Bay are a fairly poor run defense. And I don't know, I'm still not sure if we can trust him with Hines and Wilkins in the committee. Like, it's, it seems to just be a different bloke every single week for the Colts. So, yeah, I think you could probably sell him because after people after seeing that game, a lot of them will be like, oh, he's back, he's back back to top top 15, top 20 running back. But 
I don't think he's anywhere near that until we see a lot more from him. And I wouldn't be trusting him at all, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I've got him at the moment. I picked him up in a trade that I didn't even want to do, but <laughs> he was just like an accessory piece that the bloke I was trading with added, and I just copped it. Luckily, turned up for the first time in like six weeks. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't rate him at all. Um, yeah. He's probably going to go onto the waivers for me, if I'm honest. I'm not really too interested in. Uh, at the moment, I'm trying to trade him away. I can't get too much for him, but I think I'm shooting a little bit too high. But yeah, I've still got blokes like Kenyon Drake, Chase Edmonds, even Darrell Henderson above him. So yeah, I'm pretty cold on Jonathan Taylor, even as an owner who experienced that 15. The, the thing with the Colts, as you mentioned, it's a different person every week, but it's not like it's not like it's a guaranteed 20 if it's their week. It's not like the 49ers where. Like it's almost worth taking the risk that every now and then they put up a small score because when they are the main guy, they're going to kill it. We saw earlier in the season, even when Taylor was the main man, he struggled a bit. So, yeah, yeah. I would be putting too much faith in Taylor. Um, I don't think he's too relevant as a starter. Uh, my sell high, I was going to do Taylor, but I decided to go Melvin Gordon. Uh, he scored 18.4 against the Miami Dolphins thanks to two rushing touchdowns. Um, so if you quickly do the maths there, take away two rushing downs from 18.4, he's looking at a base score of like six. Um, he saw a brilliant 5.6 yards per carry. He must have had a fumble or something because I'm pretty sure he had 80 yards on the ground. So for him to have a base he's, score of six. He's had that many fumbles this season. I swear he's had like at least yeah. five fumbles. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, 5.6 yards per carry, but that was the first time. He cracked five yards per carry since week one. So that appears to be a fluke that's not going to be a trend, a weekly trend. Um, he saw no targets for the second week in a row, which automatically makes him pretty tough to trust in fantasy when in, in the rushing game he's sharing the snaps with Phil Lindsay. So, yeah, for me, he's currently 25th out of 29 running backs that I've done research on. And, yeah, I just hate how low his floor is with the lack of receiving work. And this week they've got the Saints, who are the best run defense since the start of set, uh, start of October. So, yeah, big sell high for me. Um, I haven't really been a fan of Melvin Gordon all year, and I am still not on the bus even after a good score. So he's my sell high. Do you have yep. thoughts on that one? Yep. Apparently I um, agree with that. I was doing some reading because we've talked a lot about his dr- drink driving issue. Um, yep. On this podcast, apparently it might happen like next year now because apparently yeah. the, the court date got pushed back to mid December, and there's only going to be three weeks left of the season then. So they reckon by the time the NFL decide on the suspension after the court date, it might not even affect this year. So we talked a lot about that for nothing, but oh well. That's yeah, so still- weird. Yeah, it is pretty weird how he can just be playing when he's done something illegal. But anyway, um, here's my sell high for the week. All right, moving into the territory that I am uneducated on this week, wide receivers. I was a lot more clued up on the QBs and the running backs, but the wide outs, I haven't quite looked at them yet in terms of my team. Um, but who is your buy low here? You can educate me today. Yeah, mine is Michael Thomas. Um he came back a few weeks ago. He's been playing on limited snaps until last week, and he put up seven for a hundred. Um, the man, the man's just going to be peppered with targets. He probably won't score that many touchdowns, but he's going to cut minimum ten targets a week. I tried to get him in our league, got instantly rejected. Um, but his average is still very low, and he's only had one good fantasy game this season. So I still think he's acquirable, and. I reckon he's a top eight receiver, maybe even yeah. top five. Yeah, 100%. A lot of the times when we see a quarterback where they limit the game plan like they will be with Taysom Hill, they just pick out one receiver and they just go like, let's just get to know this bloke and just pepper him. And it looks like that's what Taysom Hill's going to do to yeah. Michael Thomas. So, yeah, if you've got someone who maybe isn't the biggest NFL fan, doesn't fully know how good Michael Thomas has been in previous years, probably could get him for cheap if they just like are looking at the raw stats of what he's done so far this year. But yeah, 100% rate him because the previous weeks he was operating on seriously low snap counts. Yeah. So made his stat lines look a lot worse than they actually were. Um, but for me, my buy low, this is a huge risk and I probably wouldn't advise it 
at all, actually. <laughs> nah, jokes. Get around him. Get around him. But mine's Jarvis Landry. Um, scored 4.6 last week. and But for me, with the Browns, their last three matches have been in pretty average like weather conditions. Yeah. Um, the Raiders game was like monsoonal, then the one after that was even worse. And for me, I think we can basically just scrap the the stat lines of Baker and the receivers in the last few weeks. So the match before that, he had like 11 targets or something. Um, and now they play the Jaguars this week, and their secondary has been obliterated by injuries. Uh, their top four defensive backs are all injured right now, and their best pass rusher is also injured. Uh, the the problem with the Browns, they are a run first team, but given the fact that they've been running it so much recently because of the adverse weather, you think they might let Baker flex his muscles a little bit in the next couple of weeks because I don't think they're going to do too much in the playoffs or even get there if they are solely a running team. I think they've got to establish a bit of a balance and I reckon they might do that in the next few weeks. So Landry's the clear number one receiver there. Um, Austin Hooper's like the only other bloke who's half decent. And they've got the Titans the next week as well, who aren't that good in the secondary either so far this season. So huge risk, probably nothing more than a risky flex option at the moment. But yeah, Jarvis Landry, I think, is someone who would be seriously underrated right now. And yeah, yeah if you're feeling frisky, yeah, he'd be he'd be dirt cheap at the moment. So yeah, if you're like in a pretty set position, you're locked in playoffs. Um, could be worth just a little huge ceiling piece in Jarvis. But yeah, I was a bit stuck to be honest in the buy load and couldn't couldn't think of many. Um but you sell high, who are you looking at here? Yeah, there was actually quite a few uh good wide receiver performances last week, but I'm gonna go with Cooper Cup. Um put up 145 yards against San Fran. Um yeah, it tore them to shreds, but I think that Robert Woods is going to be their main receiver going forward. Happen, it happened in the second half of last year, and I think it might happen again this year. And, yeah, Cup's, Cup's not going to be putting up over 100 yards every week, and I think he's pretty hyped up after this week. So I think you could get quite quite a bit for him at the moment. I'd, I still wouldn't have him in my top 20 receivers. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not a big fan of Cup, to be honest. I've been pretty low on him the last few weeks, even though he's done pretty well on the weekends. But yeah, I agree with you there. Um, even though Woods, he's a lot better option than Cup, I'm not really the biggest fan of either of them, to be honest. Something about the Rams, I just don't really trust. But They've I'm, both been very inconsistent this season. Yeah, they, they, when they're on, they're on. But yeah, they, I don't like their variation. But um, my, I've copped out here, I accept that whatever but my sell high are the two Bengals boys Tyler Boyd and T Higgins um, obviously if you're somewhat of an NFL fan and you're listening to this you would have seen Joe Burrow go down with a season ending injury that means Ryan Finley's actually not going to be quarterback they announced this morning it's going to be Brandon Allen who if you remember rightly filled in a couple games last year for the Broncos I believe and yeah Sadly, Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins have been great this year, especially Tyler Boyd. I think he's 11th in terms of total points in the wide receivers. Both did decent on the weekend. Um, but, yeah, look, with with Brandon Allen throwing to them, um, even with their, their good stat line so far this year, I would hop off both of them. They're going to be overrated if you're just looking at their statistics. Um, Higgins is also getting pretty hyped up in terms of like one of the best rookies of the season. So we saw what happened in Dallas when they had Dako down, Cooper, Lamb and Gallup all took a pretty big hit initially. They have slowly turned it around recently, but Dalton is also a lot better than Allen. So yeah, I'd probably be hopping off both of them, seeing what I could get for them. And yeah, yeah. The, the only upside to Tyler Boyd is... That similar to that Michael Thomas thing I was talking about, he could just become the bloke who cops like 12 targets a week. But yeah, I'll definitely try and get rid of them because they're yeah. not going to perform as they have been so far this year. Yeah, I was going to say definitely Tyler Boyd because his average is really high. So yeah, he, he, think... he's actually been balling out. To yeah, be fair to him. <laughs> feel and, bad for him. And he's already been copping like 12 targets a week. So it's not like yeah. that number is going to go up. And obviously, yeah. way worse QB. So, yeah, if you can sell him, trade him for like a pretty solid wide receiver too. Like I'll snap your hand off for that at the moment. 
and Higgins maybe just look for like a flex play. Um, so yeah, I like a bit of a cop out there because it's not really their fault, but I think they were the clear sell highs for me today. Um, now the tight end position, the position we know and love before we get into it. I forgot to say it again as I always do, but please show the podcast some love if you're listening or watching. Feel free to subscribe if you are watching on YouTube and like the video if you're listening. Feel free to um, follow the potty, rate it, review it, whatever you can do. It would be muchly appreciated. Um, tight ends, buy low, mate. Who are we looking at here? I believe I've got the exact same bloke I had last week, and that's Hayden Hurst. Um, put up a put up a goose egg last week against New, New Orleans. <laughs> I was playing against that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, anyway, he had like two targets, put up zero, but the tight ends are just so shit this year. They're all, they are all all have a game where they score two every three weeks apart from the yeah. big three. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's got one of the best roles. Like, he's got a high snap count. He's Matt Ryan's third target normally behind Julio and Ridley, and he's definitely going to bounce back. And after scoring that zero, dirt cheap. So pick him up if you need a tight end. Yeah, I agree with you. Just a question for me personally. I think we've talked about this before, but for those listening, where do you stand on having a backup QB and tight end heading into the playoffs? Do you think it's essential or do you think it's not that important? And you can discuss whether it depend, like matters what league you're in and stuff like that, but where do you stand on those? Um, I'd say ideally... Well, yeah, obviously it depends on a few things, but ideally you'd probably want to back up for both, unless you've got like Kelsey or Darren Waller. But yeah. Yeah, because I've been huge on backups. I like having it. And this week I saw, oh, not this week, two weeks ago, I saw like what can happen when you have a backup when Breeze went down. I had Tour as my QB2. Did work out as, a, as planned because I got rid of him this week, but um, it's always nice to have a safety net there. So I think this week, I haven't had a backup for a few weeks, especially in the tight end policy, but I think this week I'm going to restructure the side and try and get one in because I don't really want to be getting an injury in like the first week of playoffs or the last week of the season in must-win games, and I've got no one to replace them with. So, yeah, I think I'll be making that move this year So or this week, so watch out on the waivers, mate. Could be some, could be some solid running backs and wide receivers getting dropped. Um, my buy low is your tight end, actually. Um, you're probably not too happy with him at the moment, but Rob Gronkowski, I reckon he's been a buy low or a sell high every single week. <laughs> we genuinely talk about him every time because he's so volatile, but he scored four and a half against the Rams, which is a pretty bad score. But for me, what really piqued my interest was his six targets. Um, obviously, it doesn't sound a lot, but in the tight ends at the moment, as you mentioned, there's a lot of um, variation going on, a lot of weeks where they get two targets three targets so to get six that's a pretty um that's a confidence boost for the owner um after he's had a few games of having three and two and yet one of brady's favorite red zone targets still after they brought in a b they still love going to the gronk there they've got a lovely playoff set of fixtures in terms of fantasy so um yeah i think the gronk is not a bad starting tight end going to the playoffs and i reckon after he's I think he's not scored the worst the last few weeks because I think he had a touchdown even with those low target counts. But, yeah, after that four and a half, even though it was against the Rams, I think you could get him for fairly cheap. So yep. maybe maybe have a look at him. Um, your sell high, though. Yeah. Um, once again, Hunter Henry. Um, the Chargers played the Jets and literally everyone in their offense balled out, including Henry. I think he had a touchdown, scored 14 points. Um but they've got a tougher schedule coming up and Austin Eckler is coming back either this week or next week. So he's going to become like their fourth option in the passing game. And I, I think you could sell him for quite a bit. Um, I, just, I just don't really have that much faith in him. I don't think his role is going to be that big going forward when Eckler comes back. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Charges are a hard one to predict this um, year. They... Kind of every week we think they're going to stop beasting, but they continue to. And, yeah, it's hard to trust their players except for Keenan Allen, to be honest. Yeah. I've got Mike Williams, and that's always a bit of a flip of a coin how he goes there. Uh, my sell high is like this is a – I just picked a random bloke, to be honest. But Robert Tonyan um, scored 15.4, um, but he hasn't been copping too many targets in the last month. 
Um, I think he went five from five against oh, I can't even remember, against the Colts, which is a pretty good turnout, but he's not going to be catching every single target every week. Um, Lazard's going to be coming back into like most of the most of the snaps on offense, and he's probably going to take away a few targets from him, and he's also probably going to take some of his red zone targets as well. Um, yeah, basically, like most tight ends, it's just a bit of a TD or bust at the moment for Tonyan. But more importantly, they've got the Bears and the Eagles in the next two weeks, so not ideal fixtures. But yeah, I'll be honest, I just picked someone random here. I didn't really know who to go with, so feel free not to listen to that one. But yeah, if he's just sitting on your bench or something, could maybe get a flex piece for him. So yeah, maybe sell him. Um, all right. I agree, Do you have any, anyone else? Anyone else to mention there, or do you want to get into the streamers? Uh, streamers. Happy. It's a miracle! Oh yeah! What about that one? Unbelievable! Balotelli, Aguero! Crowd cheers. Here's Siddle. 